What is up, adventurers? How are you? Welcome, welcome, welcome to another one of our Slant Alpha adventures. Thank you for being here. We are at Cook Airstrip in uh, just south and east of Wichita, Kansas. We were just here six months ago, six weeks ago, I guess I should say, it was six weeks ago. This was where we started our Monday Night Bush League event number 11. Well, let's never mind the fact that that one happened on a Tuesday, but Good Fixings is here. Hey, what's going on, sir? Glad you could join us. But yeah, so uh, if you're new to the channel, once a month, generally on the first Monday of the month, we partner up with Melvin Leroy and Downwind Sim for these uh, backcountry bush-style flying events. We call it Bush League Mondays, and... Uh, like I said, once a month we do those. We are, we've are we just finished up our event number 12. We're just getting ready to put together our first anniversary event for November. So the first Monday in November, which I think is the 5th, I want to say. No, the 2nd. Is it the 2nd? Holy crap. Okay, yeah. Uh, so November 2nd will be the first anniversary of the... Uh, of the, the Monday Night Bush League flights. Good fix and says, I'm just popping in for a few before I go play hockey. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. You can catch us later, of course, or um, who, who knows? Maybe we'll still be on by the time you finish. But, uh, but yeah, good to see you, as always. Um, but, yeah, so, uh, again, new to the channel, um, Monday nights, first Monday of the month, we do what we call the uh, the Monday Night Bush League Backcountry Fly-In Series. Details are over on downwindsim.com. Again, it's a joint venture between myself and Downwind Sim and Melvin Leroy. And the event for September, event number 11, which, like I said, wasn't technically on a Monday because Monday was Labor Day. But the the, uh, the day after Labor Day, we met here at Cook Air Strip just south and east of Wichita, Kansas, and we did a sandbar hopping adventure. <laughs> Melvin cleverly called it bar hopping. We went bar hopping down the Arkansas River um, from, uh, from here down to what was it called Thomas Landing? in uh, Oklahoma, down the Arkansas River. This was inspired, Melvin Leroy got inspired on this uh, from a video that he saw on YouTube from a, a channel called Gravity Night Flying, and uh, they did something very similar, and here's a piece of it here. Roads? Where we're going, we don't need roads. That might have been the bridge I hit, actually. <laughs> but anyway, there, there's a, a little piece of that uh, of that video for you. So, um, so Melvin saw this and was inspired to do kind of our own version of it. He got together with uh, our scenery guru, Dan Winsam. They put together some landable sandbars down the Arkansas River in uh, X-Plane 11. And uh, so we flew um, from this point here, Cook Airfield, down the river. And of course, I didn't plot this course down the river, but this is what we're going to do is we're going to follow the Arkansas River all the way down here. Uh, we made a stop off at uh, Oxford, 55 kilo down here. And then just as we got outside of uh, Ponca City, there's this little place called Thomas um, Thomas Landing, another little private airstrip. You'll notice in the uh, in the progress bar at the top of the screen, uh, these tiny little airports are not in the database that that progress bar pulls from. So you'll notice at the top of the screen, it says that we're going from McConnell Air Force Base, which is this um, blue double stripe here, just to our west and slightly north. We'll see. We'll actually be able to see that when we take off, and we'll head west over to join the river. Um, and then the destination, it says Ponca City, which is down here, uh, again, just west of where we're landing. So the progress bar isn't 100% accurate as to what we're doing, but it's as close as I could possibly get it. Sandbar number 15, which is where we left off when we did this six weeks ago, is just a beam, the top part of Arkansas City. And uh, so we've uh, we've plotted a point here. It's It's on the 002 radio of this VOR called Pioneer. 
at a distance of 20.8 miles. So we, we went ahead and just plotted it at 002021. So we put in the three letter identifier for the VOR, three numbers 002 for the radial, and uh, 021 representing 21 whole miles. There's no way to do 20.8. But that is uh, going to be a good point. And like I said, we're going to be right a beam. We'll be able to see the, the track and the, and the uh, football field at uh, Arkansas City High School when we get down there. And that'll, that'll be where we resume. That'll be, we'll land there. And that'll be the last one that we actually landed at on the event when we did it six weeks ago. From there, we'll resume and we'll get uh, sandbars 16 through 26. We'll end up down here by the uh, Call Lake and Call Reservoir. And uh, at that point, we will be able to cut to the west, and we'll land at Thomas uh, Landing Airstrip, which we did at the uh, end of, we, we bypassed all these, and then we landed at Thomas at the end of that adventure. But we'll, uh, we'll head down there again after we've departed from sandbar number 26. Airbus 319 pilot is here. That stabbed to the face is here. Yeah, no, we're no roads tonight, man, just sandbars. We're going bar hopping. Airbus says, going to do some Piper X Club flying this weekend, beach to beach, in real life with a friend. And have nothing to do on a layover right now, so tuning in. Yeah, always a pleasure to have you on board. This is a very different style of flying than you're used to on a day-to-day -day basis for your day job. But uh, cool that you're going to do some uh, X-Cub flying this weekend. That sounds awesome, man. That sounds very, very much in line with what we're doing here tonight. Uh, the other thing to note tonight is this very low overcast. Uh, McConnell, we don't have any, any uh, METAR here at, uh, at our origin, but McConnell's uh, only about five miles away, and it's reporting 10 statute miles, but overcast at 2,600. If you go to, uh, what is this called? Is this Wichita? This is Wichita uh, International, or Wichita National. Overcast at 2,800, but 10 statute miles visibility. All these blue dots are going to indicate, oh, we got, whoops. We got Strother now reporting a green dot. What is that? 10 statute miles, overcast at 3,100. So, Clouds might be lifting a little bit, and then I think to the west they were all starting to become green. So if the clouds are moving west to east, yeah, see down here to the south and west, they're all green. So if the clouds are moving west to east, then they should be lifting as we go. But for right now, we're just going to contend with it. it I, we're we're going to be pretty much flying this at you know 1,500 to 2,000 feet all the way down anyway because you know we want to stay nice and close to where we can see these sandbars. The sandbars, if you guys remember from six weeks ago, or if you weren't part of the channel then, um, there's a whole bunch of little sandbars that are landable as you go down the Arkansas River, and, but not all of them are the designated sandbars with the little sail banners. Um, and I'll show you those when we get to the 15th one. We'll, we'll show you what we're looking for as far as the, uh, the designated sail, um, sandbars. So we're not going to be landing on every single sandbar, just certain ones. But uh, it'll be it'll be fun to try and spot which ones have the little sail banners and which ones don't. All right, we are gassed up. We've got about four hours of fuel in the tanks. Uh, Airbus says I did some red dot flying today. Uh, two category two approaches. The advantage: no one can make fun of me for a horrible landing. That's right, exactly. Yeah, if you get the plane, <laughs> if you if you walk away from it, it's a good landing, <laughs> especially in that kind of situation. Um, plus, uh, well, was a category two is not a full auto land, is it? Category three is a full auto land, which means you're not even responsible for putting the plane on the ground. The computers are, but, uh, a category two, I think is, is, is not, you, you, there's still some pilot intervention on a cat two, I believe, but you can, uh, you can clear my confusion up on that. But yeah, category three is like, you wouldn't even say, Hey, I want I'm not even going to land at it. <laughs> All right, let's get this plane fired up and get going. What is it, uh, 12 after? Yeah, I said we were going to start uh, start flying by about 30 after. We got plenty of time. We'll be we'll be airborne well before then. Uh, and I don't really go through. I'm I'm bad about actually looking at the checklist for this plane because it's such a simple plane, and I normally don't have any issues remembering the steps. So that being said, I'm sure I'll forget something. We'll get the master battery on and the beacon and the nav lights. We'll uh, throw some mix in. We'll uh, run the fuel pump, clear the prop area, magnetos and starter. We got contact, we'll uh, shut the fuel pump off, and avionics can come on. Uh, we can go into altitude mode on our transponder. I don't think there's, last I checked, there was no air traffic control anywhere near us. Uh, oh, we got Minneapolis Center on. Is that our friend? 
Uh, no, that is not Ground Point Niner. Um, but Minneapolis Center is well north of where we're going to be, so I think we're in Kansas City Center's airspace, but they're not on, and we won't be in anything controlled anyway. Uh, but we'll go ahead and pop the mode Charlie on at least, uh, but we'll remain squawking 1200. We already have that 113.2 and I think the 002 radial, which we talked about being uh, the way that we're going to navigate to that point. We're going to follow the river down, but as we notice the DME getting down to 20.8, down here, we'll know that we're getting close to that sandbar number 15. Of course, we'll also look for that uh, that high school that I mentioned earlier. Um, we should resync the directional gyro to the magnetic compass. Magnetic compass is pointing us at exactly a 220, it looks like. So we will oh, let's spin it basically all the way around, 180 degrees. 220. We want to take off on runway 35 here. So we'll spin that around that way, and uh, then it will be a basically a left downwind. Uh, I don't want to, we don't need to rejoin the river at the very top like we did um, the night we did the adventure, because I think the first sandbar we found out is actually like right along in here, which is within the... Uh, which is in, within the delta of McConnell Air Force Base. And of course there's this Charlie shelf too, goes down. I, would, I clipped that off. I don't see the that outer Charlie shelf. Oop, we don't even see it here. The outer Charlie shelf goes to what? 2,700 feet. We'll be below that. Um, but we don't, we'll have to watch the inner Charlie shelf at Wichita, which also does go to the surface there. So instead of joining up at the top of the river where we did last time, uh, you know, we'll kind of just left downwind and we probably we you know we'll have to make a nice tight left down when tighter than what I drew it, so that we're outside of uh, McConnell. Uh, but then basically south and maybe southwest to kind of aim for the city of Mulvane and join, you know, maybe right where that bridge is or something like that. Doesn't really matter where as long as we're, you know, avoiding these airspaces, particularly this one. And again, there's no VATSIM controllers on to yell at us anyway, so it's not even super critical. But we'll try and do things right at least, regardless. All right, so 220, and then uh, this is zero, zero, or yeah, 35 is the runway we want because the winds uh, at McConnell are 0607. Okay, so the winds have shifted a little bit more easterly, but still coming out of the northeast. Uh, 35 is going to be, I guess, the best thing we've got. Uh, what else? Nav radio setup, navigation setup, uh, comm radio is already on 122.8. I'm just going to click it once, make sure that it does so, show on next pilot that I'm transmitting, and it does. Take it on faith that I'm receiving it, no problem. Uh, I think that's it, guys. I think that's. Uh, I think we're ready. We can get the uh, taxi light on, and the parking brake off, and we kind of want to roll it in the direction that we're facing here, south and... Uh, south and west from where we've parked. Yeah, I'll show you before we, uh... Ooh, I don't think I fully synced to those pedals. Yeah, they're slamming all the way to, uh, full deflection. Now, okay, yeah, I, I... Sometimes with the pedals, you have to just run them through full range before they detect that entire range. Otherwise, you, you move them just a you know, quarter of a degree, and they slam to full deflection until they detect that whole range. So now, now we've got that sorted out, we should be good to go. Let me just show you real quick. If we can zoom up to altitude just below the uh, overcast and we look to the northwest, we can can very clearly see a McConnell Air Force Base is right there. So, again, we'll want to make a tight left downwind uh, departing runway 35 and stay out of that delta. Alright, here we are. Do a little bit of a zigzag here down the taxiway so that we can kind of see ahead. I mean, you can sheet a little bit and stretch up, see over the nose. You can, you know, bump the bump the view up. But uh, in a tail dragger, a lot of times, instead of doing that, you, you just you just kind of zigzag a little bit down the runway or taxiway, just so you can see. Try not to zigzag down the runway if you can help it. Although sometimes I do that too. But uh, zigzag down the taxiway for sure, so that you can kind of see ahead. 
whether there's any obstructions. I think this is where we want to go. Again, I'm kind of, kind of just best turn a little bit to the right so I can see where that, uh, somebody over there? We got somebody joining us for this flight, guys. 216 Romeo. Are you in the, uh, uh, maybe I'm not in the, I'm not in the group flight's voice channel. However, if you are flying along with me tonight, which someone see, appears to be, and you would like to join me in the Discord voice channel, you certainly may. And if you need access to the Discord voice channel, you can, uh, Hit me up in the stream chat and let me know who you are. If you prefer to stay silent, though, that's fine, too. Happy to have someone flying along. All right, so here's where we're going to join. Uh, we're not going to back taxi all the way out to the end of 17, or the end of 3.5. We've got plenty of runway. This is actually, for, for being a tiny little uh, private airstrip, it's fairly long runway. We'll have plenty. I will, just to be on the safe side. We'll throw notch of flaps in. Trim is set. Uh, let's see. Let's do the uh, pito heat strobes. Landing light, taxi light. Okay. Cook airfields. Skyhawk 514 Delta Victor departing runway 35 left downwind VFR southbound. Cook. All right, there we are, lined up. Temps and pressure is good. Throw the power in. Do some brakes. A little bit of right rudder. Tail goes up. Banner goes by. Stay on the center line as best we can. All right, we are. Ready to go airborne, guys. Yeah, plenty of pavement left. Plenty of pavement. As soon as we're sure we've got a uh, safe altitude and airspeed, we can work on the airspeed by pitching the nose down just a little bit. Throw those flaps in and start that uh, crosswind and downwind turn. Cook traffic, Skyhawk 514 Delta Victor's clear, 3-5, we're left crosswind to left downwind, 3-5 at Cook. Let's see if we can see our friend. Oh, let's tap the brakes and stop the wheels from turning, I always forget to do that in this plane. See if we can see our friend down there. Still up at the ramp. 216 Romeo, I'm gonna get nosy, who are you? Uh, since you're not not off the ground, it's not even showing you on that spy. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine, you can lurk along. Might not even be somebody in the chat. Might it be somebody that just saw me on that spy and decided to join. But no, you're you're welcome to lurk along, whoever you are. A little throttle out. And again, kind of just heading south and west. We can almost even do south would join the river. South and west will join the river. Are we at 3,000 feet? Yeah, we want to. We want to be lower. We want to be at maybe 2,000 feet. Lean the mix out a little bit. Whoops, that's my flap lever. Forgotten. This plane says I don't have a prop lever. I shifted over one. So what would be my prop lever becomes my mix lever. What would be my mix lever becomes my flat lever. And that means all my controls for landing are all together. 
and then frees up two buttons on the joystick that I ordinarily would use for flaps. So it's just a control setup that I like to use in fixed pitch props. Frees up a couple buttons for some other things. What's two more things that I don't have to touch the uh, mouse and keyboard for? So I think we're well. I think we're well south of McConnell. You can still kind of see it. Yeah, you can see the runway lights there. We're not that far away. But you can also see the river coming in here. We'll stay at 2,500. I, I do forget what the field elevation here is. I should have checked. Oh, I don't even I don't know. Don't even know that I set the altimeter. What is the altimeter being reported at McConnell? 3008. Sounds like a recipe for confusion for the the, the, the switching of the uh, the levers around. No, man, I love having the flaps on that third lever. I just I, I do occasionally. Obviously, you just saw me. I, I went to pull the mix out and I wound up pulling the uh, flaps out a notch. But yeah, not that big a deal. So here's the river, and you can see the sandbars. I'm gonna go past so we can kind of look out the left window at the river, and I'm going to aim to stay around 2,000 to 2,500 feet. I mean, we're going to stay nice and low. We're going to be doing a lot of landings. Once we get down to the, uh, the 15th designated sandbar, where we'll start to see you know, places where we do want to land. And, uh, then I'll show you. I, in the meantime, though, okay, and, and, and I said we were going to try and join right by that bridge. It looks like we did it. Okay. Um, in the meantime, I will show you as we pass fairly low over some of those designated banners with the uh, designated sandbars with the banners. I'm just trying to look up the, the field elevation. Okay, field elevation at McConnell Air Force Base is 1372. Field elevation at our destination, Thomas, is 1110. So say 1200 round figures, so 2200 is 1000 feet above ground level. That's kind of what we had to do is 2200. All right, so not all of these sandbars have the little sail banners. And some of them have planes and other scenery objects, but they don't have sail banners. So Downwinson was very devious when he put this together. He scattered scenery objects on all, a lot of these sandbars, but only certain ones were designated as, as the ones to land on with those banners. And on the back of those banners was like a word puzzle. You had to collect all 26. There we go. You can see the, that's the word puzzle side. Um, on the front side of all those banners uh, is a number. And uh, they are sequential. That's a good thing. Is so if you if you if you get 13 and you get 15, you know you missed one and you can go back for it. But again, uh, we won't be landing on every sandbar. We'll actually be, you know, kind of scanning down as we go, just like we did, looking for those little banners. Let's see if I can see one from the front where you can see the number designation. Again, we started, when we did this event in uh, September, we collected numbers 1 through 15, so I'm skipping all the way down to number 15. We'll land at number 15 again. We'll pick up right from where we left off. So 16 will be the first kind of new one. Now, I did go back off stream and collect the rest of them, and I submitted some, uh, okay, there's... there was a banner there. I thought I saw it. So I did go back off stream and collect the rest of them and send sent my uh, my best shot at the word puzzle to Dan Winsim. And he keeps telling me, every time I've mentioned it since, he keeps telling me I'm about as close as anyone's gotten on it. But uh, I got about 90% of it. But the other 10% of it I'm lost. I'm, I'm. I keep telling him, man. I, I, I've, I've got as much of it as I'm going to get. He, I think he, he keeps pushing me to, to look at it one more time and try and figure out the, 
the last little pieces of it. But I'm telling them, nope, um, I've, I've done as much as I can. I'm happy with, I'm happy knowing that I got most of it. Yeah, and I'm kind of shortcutting. I'm not, I'm not being real strict following the water down as long as we keep the river in sight because again, you know, we're skipping over the first good chunk of it. I do want to show you, if I can, the front side of one of those sail banners. Picking up a little extra altitude too. Come back down to uh, those binoculars have incredible zoom and stability. They must be expensive. They were custom made for us by Mr. Damwinson. <laughs> he thinks he's so clever, man. And he thinks it because it's true. <laughs> Actually, gonna pull a little throttle out of it here. I want to slow down a little bit. That help me uh, maybe spot one of these banners for you guys. All right, there's a. Is that a banner or is that just like a log? Yeah, I think that's one of our banners. Kind of let me take the turn nice and wide so we can get a lateral view of it. If I'm able to zoom in enough, we'll be able to see what number it is. Nope, that's the word puzzle side again. <laughs> Alright, well let's do a quick circle. Let's do a quick circle so you can at least see what the front side of those things supposed to look like. And then let's just make sure when we're done with this little circle, let's just make sure that we resume tracking the river southbound and not northbound. <laughs> Flashing past a little bit too quickly to see, but you can see it's an orange circle with a number in it, and I can't tell what number that is. It's flashing past a little bit too quickly, but orange circle with a number in it, and like I said, they're sequential, 1 through 26, and they're not, not every single, there's probably like 60 or 70 sandbars, maybe 80 sandbars, maybe 100 sandbars as you go down the river here uh, during the, uh, at least in the, the area that is, was involved in the, the, in the game. I mean, there's a bunch. It was it wasn't every sandbar that was designated. It was every fourth or fifth one. About one every two to three miles. So we are now south and east. This this portion of the river kind of goes southeast. So at least you got I'm mean, hopefully a good enough idea of what those banners look like. We'll see one up close. We're gonna we're gonna head down to to pick up number 15. And then from then on, we'll land at each one from 15 to 26. And again, we know number 15 is on the 002 radial, which we're, I guess, left, we're right of. I guess I should really, spontaneously, I should spin it around to uh, 182. So that'll give us the correct way to, to, to uh, correct the course. We're inbound toward a one eight, yeah, eight one two. So it's uh, it's off to our left, and it's still at thirty six miles. We said it was going to be at twenty twenty point eight. So we're another fifteen miles down the river yet. I'll put a little throttle back in. I mean, we're not in a rush tonight. If we were in a rush, we would not be flying in a Skyhawk.
Just kind of peeking at some stuff on my other monitor, so my attention is distracted. I apologize. I will try my best not to slam us into the ground while I'm looking around here. Also, we've got the various furry co-pilots entering and leaving the cockpit at their whim. So, always try to kind of keep tabs on what they're doing. <laughs> Flavored water tonight, not Red Bull. My apologies to the Red Bull company who has continued stubbornly not to sponsor the stream officially. <laughs> One of these bridges, and I think it was the one further down, actually. Um, one of these bridges, I got dared to try and fly under, and I just barely clipped it. Had to respawn. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to try that again tonight. But there's a clip of it from my vantage point, and there's a clip of it from Downwind Sims' vantage, vantage point. If you ever wanted to go back and look at the... Uh, Clips on the Twitch channel. Relive my moment of stupidity and all its glory. Tell you what, it's a touch warm in the cockpit here. I'm gonna open the window. And I mean the uh, actual physical cockpit, not the pretend one here on the screen. So bear with me for one second. Let me just make sure we're nice and nice and trimmed out as I walk away from the controls for just a second. So, I'm going to have to take the headphones off to do that. Be right back. Alright, 29.1 on the DME as we count down to 20.8. For our sandbar number 15, and uh, and like I had said, when we get down there, we will see that we are a beam of Arkansas City, which appear, appears to rest, according to Sky Vector, appears to rest right on the border of uh, drawn a blank, Oklahoma and Kansas. There we go. So it looks like maybe just north of the border of Arkansas City, Kansas. And the funny thing is, like, the actual state of Arkansas is, like, way over here. <laughs> we're down the Arkansas River in Arkansas City, and we're no, nowhere near the actual state of Arkansas. But uh, we'll see that Arkansas City, and we will see... Just a beam, kind of this northern part of the city. There's a road that comes out and dead ends at the sandbar. And then there's a high school, there's a track, and then there's some uh, baseball fields uh, there, just past the track. And the track and football field. I mean, it, it's definitely a high school athletic facility. But we'll do it, we'll do it like a little fly, fly over the town. I'll show you that. Just over to our west, I believe, is going to be, and if, if, if this memory serves, this little road here, and then uh, this is going to be um, the one we stopped over at, which was Oxford. Just think there should be this little town of Oxford on this side of the river. Which I maybe can't see. Unless we're already past that. All right, stab to the face. It's got to drop for a bit. Safe travels. Yeah, man. Good to have you as always. So that might actually not be Oxford. That we might already actually already be past Oxford and down here near. Uh, that might be 
this airport, um, Winfield. Matter of fact, yeah, I think that's, and that's, it's so, so close. It's got to be Winfield, Oxford, which is a little further away. So just south of that, yeah, we should be coming into the top end of Arkansas City here. Just just south of that, looks like the river comes swings way over to the east. And uh, that is indeed what we're seeing up here. So we're almost at our sandbar number 15. Uh, remember, if you if you joined this if you joined this late, the progress bar at the top of the screen is not 100% accurate. I, I set it to the closest airports in the database that we had to where we started and will be ending. Uh, so, but it's close. It's it, it should give you a decent indication of the progress. But progress on the second half of this flight is going to be a lot slower since we're going to be landing on all these little designated sandbars. Again, downwindsim.com for the um, for the Bush League Monday night flight itinerary details. Our first anniversary when coming up in just a couple of weeks now. And I don't want to spoil it, but we will be headed back to kind of where the the magic began. It will be a flight in an area that we have not done an event in. But if you've heard me talk about how we got the idea for the thing, you may know where we will be going in a couple of weeks. Where the where the birth of the idea happened. So are we? Yeah, we're coming into the north end of town. Not quite to the one that dead ends. <laughs> Dark Raider says it is in snow. Because that's what I'm in now. Even all of it hasn't come down yet. Oh man. No, I don't think there was there's there's typically too much snow where we'll be going. Snow? Where we're going, we won't see snow. Okay, here's the here I think is the little road that I was talking about that kind of dead ends right there at the sandbar. And so the sandbar number 15 is maybe that one there. No, I think that's too small. It's really close to there, though. <laughs> there is an upside there, yeah. It's going to be slightly south of your position, Dark Raider. Um, so here's the road that leads into town. And here's the high school track I was talking about, and then the uh, the baseball fields on the far side. There we are. And this is uh, Ortho 4 XP scenery, so not quite as, as beautiful and 3D and robust as your flights in 2020 would be, um, but pretty close. I mean, the Ortho scenery again. It, it, you get when you get that down close, you can tell that most of it is flat imagery, uh, but at altitude, it does really almost look as good. All right, we're going to start pulling some speed out. And uh, I'm not going to drop a whole lot of altitude yet, but I do want to circle back. This is indeed exactly where uh, where I was referring to. Top end, the north northern part of Arkansas City, Kansas. So, so one of these spots over here, it might be this one. Yeah, I think it's this one. Banner number 15, yep, okay, I think that's it right there. That's definitely a banner, and I'm almost certain, just based on the geography of it, that this is number 15. Winds are kind of out of the north, and uh, so I think what I'm going to do is circle around, come at this thing from the south and to the north. So we're going to be, contrary to the, the, the river flow direction, the south and the 
the adventure flow direction is to the south, but I think for each one, we'll kind of do a downwind, uh, downwind pattern to it. It's only appropriate since it's all put together by downwind sim. <laughs> all right, let's get some speed out. Last one. You guys can put some landing rate predictions in if you choose to. I'm not going to solicit that every time. We're going to do a total of, um, what is it? We're going to 11 sandbars plus this one would be 12 sandbars plus 13. We're going to do 13 landings tonight. So um, I probably get tired of soliciting for the uh, predictions. But you guys can put them in just automatically if you want. Okay, it's that, it's that further, further sandbar up. So let's get some more speed off, laps two, get some more altitude off. Get ourselves nice and stable, flying right up the river. Yeah, I don't think we're going to spend too much time worrying about the uh, landing rate predictions tonight, guys, although the, uh, the window will activate. But like I said, it's going to be a total of 13 landings tonight, so we'll... <laughs> and uh, and that's that's optimistic. That's if That's if everything goes well. <laughs> And it is still roasting in here. All right, there's our, there's the one we're aiming for. Head to the left. Oh, we got traffic passing up to our uh, above us to our right. Boy, this doesn't seem like the uh, most sensible way to uh, direction to approach this, does it? My flaps full. It's rich. These also might not be the silkiest landings tonight, guys. These are, these are going to be fairly short field landings. You know, floating is, is going to cost you, so a lot of times we're going to be planting these things pretty firm. Didn't mean to do it that firm, but... Uh, didn't mean to do it that firm, but yeah, that's the kind of thing we're going to need to be doing all night in order to stay out of the water. leave it at flaps one and set trim just so I don't forget it now I'm gonna also leave the uh, leave the lights in uh, flying configuration I will show you the close-up of the banner I think our, our friend landed on the sandbar across the way there maybe I'm not sure what he did okay so since I'm not in his way I've got time to come over here and we'll show you, so we'll show you the... Well, let's do it this way. Let's do it this way. Let's position the plane for departure. And yeah, we'll cut through the, a little bit of this brush here. Take it back to the other side. But I'll, uh, I'll, I'll pop the camera view out of the plane and uh, we'll walk around and I'll show you that banner, guys. I think at this point, six weeks after the uh, six weeks after the initial puzzle, I don't think I'm spoiling too much by showing you the puzzle side of the banner. And again, I, at this point, I'm not collecting them to participate in the puzzle anyway. Yeah, this this one tall tree made that landing rather complicated. <laughs> and again, should we kind of see what see what our friend is doing here? Where is he? Don't see him. Oh, he's up behind us now. Okay, well while we're uh, 
staying out of his way, come back down and uh, find that banner. Oh, there he is. So this is what the banners look like from the front. Bush League Backcountry Flying Series. Sail banner number 15. And I'm told, by the way, Downwind Sim says that uh, if there's any appreciable wind, these things will flap in the wind, too. And then on the back, like I said, all, all, all 15 of these have letter, uh, letters between two and, I think, six letters. And some, some of them are circled. Uh, this one just has the two letters with none of them circled. So, uh, But the, every one was kind of different, and they all... They all kind of meant something. Right, so where's our friend? He's driving to us. <laughs> or is he taking off again? Taking off headed for the next one? Yeah, if he didn't install the scenery packet, he might have a little bit of different uh, look than what we have. All right, he's airborne. Yeah, of course, that sim, you know, position updates only happen once every five seconds. So anytime the direction changes rapidly, you see that kind of herky jerky movement. So. Wait and see what he's doing. He's coming, right, he's coming right. He's coming right for us. All right. I'm not sure where he's going, but he's apparently going to be out of our way. So we'll go ahead and we got flaps set. Uh, what am I doing? I wanna, wanna take off in the northbound direction. Power. In for peak RPMs. Seems like that's gonna be it right there. Breaks off. Tails up. Let's fly. Alright. Still not out of the woods. Let's keep the nose down as much as we can. Pick up altitude and airspeed as gently as we can. Melvin says, I still have two clues to find after two trips. Yeah, I, I did find all the rest of them, Melvin, so uh, this is just kind of a on-stream reenactment of the second flight that I did. I, I did that off-stream. There we go. So an on-stream reenactment of the second flight that I did. I'll be looking for hints on the final two. Okay, gotcha, man. It's also a while ago that I did it, so I don't know that I remember exactly where everything was. So where's the one that we just took off from? Is it... <laughs> is that one there? Okay, so at this point, now we've got to really watch speed and altitude, and we got to be looking at, at all of these to look for these little sail banners, and at this point, you know, I don't really remember where they were or weren't. So we're going to... Keep the speed down, keep the altitude down.
will try to not crash the plane as I, uh, as I look around here. And remember, we just took off from number 15, so if we do see number 17, then we will realize that we'll have to come back for one. There were a couple that were on these little island sandbars. We'll see one there. And and the other thing is, of course, at a certain point, they all kind of look the same. <laughs> Flying the plane really more by feel at this point, because... I can see now. It, it may maybe off of the right side of your all screen. I can see my uh, airspeed indicator, but I can't see the altimeter or the vertical speed. And so I'm really kind of flying by feel. Like I feel like we're fairly level and not gaining or losing altitude here. All right, let's see what we can see on this one. Yeah, I don't think there was that one, that one there. This looks familiar though, like this, this one on around the bend might have been one. Yeah, I think there is one through the tree there. So we'll set up for an arrival. The first notch flaps in a little early. We're above that white arc. Really should have gotten the speed off first. Right there is what we're aiming for. Second notch flaps in. Thanks, Rich. Notch. Starting at base to final. Who is that? Space Gator is here. Thank you very much for being back. Go easy on me on the uh, vertical rate, guys. We're gonna be we're gonna be firmer than we would ordinarily see. Dark Raiders says Sky Vector. I took a look at last stream, found it very interesting. Yeah, this is a really cool place. Showed Melvin that you weren't uh, you weren't here at the beginning. I showed a little piece of that video that essentially served as the inspiration for this. Oof. 257, so that was a little bit better. Thought I flared that one pretty well, and then it turned out that I didn't. <laughs> it did look like it said 16 as it flashed by, so I think we're good there. And again, I, the word puzzle uh, to, for me doesn't it isn't as critical at this point because I did, did collect them. But I do want to make sure that as we revisit this adventure, I do 
do want to make sure that we revisit all the all the designated sandbars. Indeed, say 16. Okay, good. Uh, so we're flaps one. Trim is. Uh, let's reset the trim. What's going to give us the longest? Some of these logs you can actually like hit, <laughs> so that probably wasn't very smart of me to just plow over it like that. Alright. Spin it around, let's watch out for that tree, Mr. George of the Jungle. So there you go, there's the um, back end of the word puzzle that's associated with Clue number 16. All right, trim set, flaps are set. Temps and pressures look good. Takeoff power set. Lean for peak RPM. Brakes off. Tails up. Ready, 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 let's fly. Oh, jeez. Right, gentle, gentle right bank. Watch. Well, we got power lines over here, too. Jeez. All right, let's make sure we're going to clear them. Yeah, I think we're good. We'll worry about getting the flaps in as soon as we are sure that we're not going to stall and crash. Stall, spin, crash, and burn. with the flaps, we're going to get those in. Uh, we're headed east. And then, uh, yeah, this thing kind of bends up to the north here. Yeah, and then it makes a hard 180 right turn. That's south. i going to check these here. Because I can't remember at this point. circle back for that one. <laughs> Almost certain that one that we were just looking at said 17, so... Kind of doing a pretty aggressive right pattern for it here. Not this one right in front of us, I don't think. I think it was the one a little further up. Flaps are set, mix is rich. Oh. Floated that one kind of long. Sure going around. That was kind of dangerous. I wish we were going around on that one. But 
But like I said, as we as we flew past it, I'm almost certain it did say 17. Now I can't see the banner. There it is. Okay. Yep, 17. Okay, doing good so far, guys. What do we got? Nine more. Those old DC-3 pilots would purposefully ground loop on short fields. Yeah, man, sometimes it's what you gotta do to just keep it on, on, on uh, surface. Just you know, get it spun around. If you can do it without scraping a wingtip, get it spun around, and then you can thro you know, throttle up, and it's almost like reverse throttle by spinning the engine around 180 degrees. <laughs> Flaps, trim. Okay, we're just going to leave the lights in uh, flying configuration. Just one, one less thing for us to worry about. This this is a nice long one to depart from. I'm not going to be as concerned with this takeoff. It's one nice thing, although, I, like I said, I really floated that landing. Too long. Fortunately, we had all this sand to work with, otherwise we'd have been in trouble. Alright, temps and pressures look good, takeoff power set. In the max RPMs. Yo, forward brakes off. More right rider than we're putting in. Uh, we only clipped the sail banner a little bit. <laughs> uh, and I'm just going to climb straight out until I uh, know I've got speed. Or nose down a little bit, get some speed up. Now that we're now that we got speed, we can throw those flaps in, make that turn. You don't want to start that bank while you're at near near uh, stall angle of attack, because you're just gonna plunge yourself into the into the terrain sideways that way. All right, so we did. We made that sharp right turn to head south. see stop <laughs> I always forget to tap the brakes after we get rolling this the friction model on these tires man I guess it's these big fat bulky bush tires they'll just keep rolling forever man I'm not sure how realistic that is necessarily but roll for an hour if you let them We got another nice wide one coming up. Yep, there's a banner there. Alright, we're already at flaps one speed. Oh, wait a minute. Did I, uh... Did I get myself turned around? Because I'm facing north now. I might have uh, might have gotten myself turned around. Yeah, yeah, I think we we landed on that one before.
Landed on that one before. All right. Continue off this far east. Yeah, I guess it really does, huh? Way over here by where it says Munson and Silverdale. It does kind of come way off to the east there. Air Joss is here. What's going on? We're doing some bar hopping, man. Sand bar hopping, but you know. Uh, let's see. So we're looking for. Oh, wait a minute. Is that a, one of our banners? Nope, just some logs scattered about. Okay. It's log, it's log, it's big, it's heavy, it's wood. How many people know the reference? <laughs> All right, so I'm kind of lost. I don't really remember this from last time. It's funny, I may, I may have gotten myself turned around when I did this off stream and then happened to find the next one by accident because that's kind of what I feel like is happening here. <laughs> I'm impressed by the log song references, Space Gator. Yeah, man. A pop culture reference out of me has to be at least 10 years old or, a while, or I won't know it. That one's more like, what, 25 years old? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe more. All right, we had another. Yep, you got it, man. You got it. Glad somebody's with me. The rest of you all just think I'm nuts. And you're not necessarily wrong about that either. <laughs> go. <laughs> Victory! Alright, let's see. we got two nice big wide sandbars here. Let's see if we've got a banner on one of them. And we got another one up around the bend there. Alright, I'm going to circle. I think, I think I might be missing one on that one there, so let's Gently circle that one. See if I can put eyes on the back end of it. Maybe? No? It's possible. I do think, like, I, as I recall flying this off stream, I do feel like there was a, a time where I kind of got disoriented and I found the river and I saw a banner and I landed and I was like, oh, oh, that's the next one. <laughs> That may be, this may be the part that I accidentally skipped, and it might not have any banners on it anyway, so I think it might be good here. Um, but I'll, since I already started this circle, we'll, we'll take a closer look at that one, make sure that I'm not accidentally passing up any. We landed, what did we land on, guys? We landed on, uh, we landed on 16 and 17, so we're looking for 18. And again, those of you joining late, downwindsim.com is where the information for this challenge and the scenery installation that goes with it is is, uh, is kept. The banner down there in that little cluster of bushes is there? No, okay. Downwindsim.com, and this was challenge number 11 from September. 26 designated sandbars down the Arkansas River. And uh, we, 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 the night of the event, we got up to number 15. 
So tonight we found 15 again, we resumed, we found 16 and 17, we're looking now currently for number 18, and oh, there is a banner down there. We see the number? Oh, that's 19, we did pass one. Okay, well let's land at 19 and then we'll backtrack. So flaps notch one going in. Flaps notch two. About 500 above ground level, so we'll start our fairly right, uh, fairly tight right base to final turn. Yeah, so we did somehow pass up number 18. I, th I thought maybe I. I think I found number 18 by luck when I did it off stream. So there was definitely a part, and it might have been that, that, uh, oh, wait a minute, are we, are we cutting this way too tight? Three fifty six. Worst one of the night. Worst one of the night. Plenty of space though. We could have really put some more power in, leveled it out, and done a much firmer, much softer touch. Without worrying about it. Yeah, that's a shame. So if we come to the other side of this, and this is number 19. Yeah, you see how one of them circled? That that had that was like a second part of the puzzle. So if this is number 19, then we'll have to head back, take off. We'll have to set head back and, and land on number 18. We'll have to figure out where how we how we skipped it. Yep, that is indeed 19, okay. And you can now see that it is flapping in the wind a little bit. <laughs> Very cool. Like I said, downwind sim is just uh, too clever for his own good. Um, I don't need to go all the way to the south end of the sandbar, but let's go south a little ways. Get flaps one set. Uh, trim set. I feel like that's probably more than enough. Spun around. Into the right of the sail. Alright, temps and pressure's okay, brakes on, power on. Lean for uh, max RPM. Brakes off. Hang on, I'll check that message in just a second. Too banked, too steeply banked here. Uh, so was it was 18 like right on top of this? I don't remember. Let's gain a little bit of altitude and see if we can find number 18, which I uh, 
clearly pass along here somewhere. Random quicksand would probably be a bit much. Uh, yeah, no, this was enough of a challenge without that kind of stuff, man. One of these, it very well might have been. I, I thought I looked at this one. And didn't see one. Yeah, these were these were plenty challenging. Just in their own right. Oh, yeah, there is one there. There's our 18, okay. Alright, so let's circle back here. So a lot of times what I did, what I was doing there, guys, I'll show you. Let me get that first notch of flaps out. Was I was I was kind of judging my path, judging the runway direction by flying a perpendicular path, and it looked like a two four. So there's about a uh, downwind, what one five. So it's probably about a three three. And then as I looked up, I saw this spot here. I was like, well, that's going to be a good turn-in point for the base and final. So as I'm you know, kind of lining these things up, that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to like visualize the pattern and then pick out some landmarks to, uh, to judge the turns from. Again, this is another nice big one, so I should be able to finesse this landing a little bit better than... Let's see if we can get under 200 this time at least. Again, about a 60 would be the base heading. And okay, yeah, we can go ahead and turn final now. Now that I'm setting up for this one, I kind of remember it. But yeah, I, I've... I definitely don't feel like I'm no, I'm learning my way around here. I'm just kind of winging it <laughs> the entire time. Back in Kansas, downwind, Sam. Yes, we are. In your dastardly creation. Bush League number 11. This is the man himself, guys. The man responsible for this. Uh... Yeah, I think we should be able to finesse this just a little bit more. There we go. Bounced it just a touch, but still, that was much nicer than the ones I've been doing earlier today. I'm going to set flaps one so I don't forget to do it later. So yeah, best one of the night so far. Yeah, we had to circle back. This is the this is the dastard himself. Yes, indeed, the dastardly dastard. And again, downwind sim, of course, you're aware that I've got I got the word clues collected, and uh, I'm just kind of on stream coming back and landing at the ones that I didn't land at on stream when we did this the first time. So yeah, now that it's when I set up for this one, I could I kind of remember this one, but somehow I passed it and had to come back for it just now. So we did already land at 19 but had to circle back and catch this one. Right, so flaps one set. Let's uh, reset trim. And again, so we're not really worrying about the word puzzle side too much. We're just making sure we're going to see all the numbers on screen tonight. That's the <laughs> I'll take that as a compliment down with some yes. And of course you know that it is meant as one. So Listening on the drive home is down with them. Very good, sir. Very good. 
Yes, the sandbar 18 was that real big triangular one. And somehow I, I missed it. I didn't see the banner as I flew past and saw 19 and uh, landed there and then had to, had to come back north and east to catch this one. All right, so we landed at 18. We landed at 19 out of sequence. We got six more of these guys, 20 through 26, and then we'll finish up at Thomas Landing. Lats are set. Trim is set. Brakes on. Power set. Lean peak RPM. Yoke forward, brakes off. A little bit of right rudder. Keep the nose pointed to the right of that large tree there. Tails up. Speeds in the green, let's fly. Alright, so now we're headed north and west. We gotta, as soon as we get enough altitude to and speed to feel safe getting flaps up and getting turned around, we can kind of do a little pirouette in the sky here. Not too uh, aggressive of one until we are not registering on the angle of attack meter. Still kind of, still kind of close to the envelope here. Get leveled out, get some speed up. Ooh, getting dizzy. All right, there we go. We managed not to fall out of the sky, which is also good news. Okay. So again, we're kind of on this uh, easterly, southeasterly bend of the river here. I can grab a uh, screen snip of Sky Vector. Come on. Yeah, we're, st we're still in this kind of southeasterly bend, and then it's going to take a right turn and head south and slightly west. So that's where we are. We're in that stretch there. some throttle out of it. So if, if I remember correctly, we said that this wasn't one, but the one just around the bend was our number 19, I think. So as we make that turn around the bend, let's 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 go let's swing that turn wide so we can look out the right window and, and reconfirm visually that there is that banner number 19 there. And then I don't know. At this point, I mean, like I said, we've got six more of these. And I've seen all of them, but I really, you know, I was kind of winging it that night. Not sure. I'm sure I'll remember them when I see them. I think there's at least one more that's on an island, if I remember correct. see the banner that time. This one. Okay, yeah, this was there was this little fork in the river too, so I think maybe that's where we were. speed out of that. Okay, so this was one, I think, this was where we maybe just were. Yeah, I think that was our number 19. Or no, is that 20? Uh, well, that might be our 20 now. So I'm going to go ahead and set up and circle. We're in the white arc for flaps one. I 
I slowed the scent to join the river. Laps two as we make the turn. Still need lots of altitude to drop here. We're still 1800. We need to be down around 1200 for the landing. Mix is going full rich. We're at flaps two. One more notch of flaps to go. We got some speed to bleed off. We'll go ahead and get that third notch in. Okay, yeah, this is definitely a different one. Another one that's nice and long. So again, we've got plenty of room to play with as far as making this, this, the arrival as comfortable as possible. Let's get some power out. Let's get that last bit of excess speed out. Best one of the night yet. Starting to remember how to do this stuff, guys. All right, well, and there was a little bounce there too. I mean, we know we're gonna we're gonna be bouncing these things all night. And it was all the way up on this end. But again, I think if I if my eagle eye spotted the word puzzle, it's one that we haven't seen yet, which. Leads me to believe that it's going to be sale banner number 20. Again, I'm not... Tides VR is with us. Not too worried about collecting this, the word puzzles this time around, since I did... Did, uh... Did grab them all... Previously. But I just want to, uh... Just wanted to do some bar hopping tonight, I say. Past the banner. Nope. Still up there. Okay, so yeah, this has gotta be this has gotta be number twenty. I'm praying right now that it's not twenty one. <laughs> I don't think it can be, and this was this kinda came up on us quickly, so I don't think we could have passed one, but I don't know, there's like, there's a sandbar like every 500 feet. It's possible. This says 21 on it, I'm really going to have to smack my forehead hard. It's at 20. Number 20, okay. Alright, good, good, good. Let's taxi back down to the, uh, South end of this thing, we'll take off again. The wind is, winds are mostly out of the north, you know, northeast a little bit, so we're trying to, trying to circle and um, as we proceed south along the river, we're kind of doing, you know, downwind patterns to get to these things. Let's go ahead and get flaps one set, trim neutral. Went a little, get a little more length down the beach here. That should be that should be plenty. I will spin it around. We'll aim it. Just to the left of that sail banner, we see this one little tall tree sticking out here. That's kind of what we're aiming for. Maybe a little bit to the left of it. All right, there we go. All right, brakes are in, power's up. Temps and pressures are all still looking good. Lean for max RPM. Yoke in, brakes out. Tails up. It's green, time to fly. Good 
Ah, there we are. Once again, let's, let's worry about safe altitude and airspeed first. Get the nose down, get the speed up. Safe altitude first, then we'll get the airspeed up. And get the flaps in. And we'll uh, spin the sucker around and get pointed down southbound along the river again. Okay, and it did say, I think, uh, and I could be remembering this wrong at this point, I do think there is at least one more that's on an island, but only six more overall to go. And I always forget to stamp, stop on those brakes and stop those tires from turning. So we did see 20, and we are in sequence at this point, looking for 21. It's a nice wide one too, but it's uh, it's got that brushy area in the middle of it, so I don't know. I don't think he would have designated that one. He didn't make this impossible. He made it hard, but not impossible. I don't know. There is a nice wide area here. Take a close look. Make sure. All right, I don't see any sail banners, guys. If you see one that I'm not spotting. Shout. Got the smaller sandbar kind of right underneath us here. We got we got a banner there. Yeah, I don't think so, but I'm gonna circle left and get a better look at it. Let's not fall out of the sky while we do it. Is that a banner? Just remember that we're doing this. Oh, 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 is this our island? I gotta remember that I'm in retro, uh, retrograde motion here. We're going north along the river now. Is this our next island? This might be the island I was thinking of. How long did it take me to find 26? I, th I think I, uh, I think I got it can't. It's been a while now. Elvin said he needed hints on the last two. I don't remember. Maybe I lucked into it, Elvin said. I don't remember it being... too terrible. Maybe I, I could be... You know, there, was, there were a couple times that I got turned around and I found a couple of them by, by luck. Might have been one of them. And I feel like that. Yeah, you know, not getting a good enough look. So I'm going to circle around again. Al South MIA is here, Mr. Al. Mr. Al was one of the ones that was with us on the day that the idea for this series came about almost a year ago now. I 
felt like there was I felt like there was at least one more on an island so I'm, I'm giving the island an extra look Ooh, wait a minute yep here we are okay so we're uh, we kind of want to be well wind wise and that is a fairly small island too so I think I am going to circle around and do it the right way, approach it from the south. A little more speed off, get into that white arc. Turned around. So this is about a 2 1. About a 2 1, and uh, I almost see this little round patch there as our base to final. Uh oh. Al says, My PC has become a piece of crap since I installed Flights in 2020. Well, Al, I also heard. We're way high. We're at 2,200 feet. I also heard that there was a recent Windows update that seems to be wreaking havoc on people. I don't think it has struck me yet. But I saw an article today that suggested that the latest Windows update that came out within the last week is, uh, is causing some issues. Right, so I kind of want to aim for that brown patch there. That was my visual spot point for the uh, kind of the base to final turn. Al says I installed a few updates as well. Yeah, um, if I can find the article, I'll uh, link it in the Discord. Or if there's someone in the stream chat that knows what I'm talking about, please feel free to link it in the stream chat. Link protection is not active here. You guys have, can post a link without ha having to get permission for it. Um, okay, there's our island. But if, yeah, if, if any of you know the article that I'm talking about, maybe you saw it today as well. But an, uh, I think a, an, an update that was dated October 13th seems to be causing people all kinds of problems. Alright, so I think this is about as good as we're going to do as far as having the long side of the island to land on. This is going to be one where I think I'm not going to be able to really finesse too much. I'm going to just try and get it down. I mean, we're not going to try and break the plane, but we don't have a whole lot of extra room to play with as far as floating and getting a nice rate. So we'll just do it as stable as we can. Get what we get. 144, that's not bad though. Okay, and let's just double check. This was indeed number 21. Okay, good. We taxi back to the south end of the island. And I tell you what, this one we're going to have to do like full. <laughs> There's our friend who's flying along with us tonight. In a different plane, though. He was showing up earlier as the, uh, the Prop Strike 172. He switched planes on me here. I'm going to 
to taxi off into the brush here since it looks like he might be setting up to land. Or is he landing on the sandbar across the way? Yeah, I, he's not somebody who's talking to me, so I don't know if he's got the scenery installed or what he's got, so... Could happen long either way. Always good to have company. All right. Well, so if we're as far south as we can go on this island, let's. Um, we're actually going to do the full short field. Power up. Lean for peak RPM. Go down. Brakes off. No flaps. We're going to throw the flaps in at the moment we rotate. Like, we really just need as little drag on the plane as possible. We don't have much runway left here. Here we are. Whew. Yep, okay. So altitude's good. Speed's dipping. Now that we're safe on the altitude, nose down, speed up. And we can get the flaps in. Once we're at a safe altitude and airspeed, then we can start worrying about the turn and following the river in the, in the correct direction. It's actually spinning around this way. Okay, so we're rejoining the river in the proper direction. We know that we landed on that island, which was 21. I'm now blanking on that. Is that was that 21? We got five more. That's the one we just took off from. Nothing doing along in there, it doesn't look like. circle around to the east just a little bit so on the left turn I can get the next one out the left window start to the west a little bit my bad I think we're good there. Another island. Not sure that that's long enough. Right, let's, uh... What are those manatees taking in the sun? Yeah, I don't know. Lots of little brush and uh, shrubberies.
A little vegetation. Lots of logs. And this is kind of looking familiar here. Might be that one up ahead, actually. Oh, no, there's 22 right there. So we're kind of on a downwind. Al says, I'd like to see some alligators in the Everglades. Well, we'll have to talk to Asobo. Maybe they'll model some for us, or maybe they have modeled some for us. Laps two as we make the turn. Laps three, we still got some altitude and speed to lose. We're gonna float over top of the sandbar that kind of splits here. The one that we're landing on is up ahead. Not a lot of extra room to play with on this one, but I feel like I've got the altitude managed a little bit better this time. So hopefully, put it right here on the edge of the beach, but not have to slam it down too hard. So not great, but definitely not the worst of the night either. And we'll go up just to double check. We'll spin it around, double check that this is indeed number 22. But I feel like I got a pretty good view of it as we flew over it. on the wrong side of it. That says Jiho. Wind's starting to flap a little bit. Wind must be picking up now. Twenty-two is correct. The Greater Hartford Open says Blast Pop. Blast Pop, good to see you back here. Yeah, I feel like I'm pretty well understanding what the uh, word puzzles were, but there were. A few toward the end here that I didn't quite 100% put together. Dan Winsome keeps uh, keeps encouraging me to, to give it another look, and I'll I tell you, I have. He says I've got most of it. I've got 90% of it. And I keep telling him, I, yeah, yeah, I, I know. I know I've got 90% of it, and that's, that's as much as I'm going to get. <laughs> I've looked at it enough times. I'm happy with my, I'm happy with my A minus. <laughs> <laughs> Normally, I am, you know, pretty pretty good with those kinds of puzzles. But that, that one, I was just like, well, I know, I know, I've got a good chunk of it figured out. There's these last couple clues that I'm just not a hundred percent on, and by golly, I've I've spent enough time. All right, flaps, trim, brakes, power. Lean for RPMs, yoke in, brakes off. Tail is up. 
<laughs> Plane is up. Yeah, I feel like Diamond Summit, I feel like I've got the gist of what the rest of it is, but... Not solid enough to, to submit an answer that I'm like, that's definitely it. I mean, I think you and I have already discussed that I'm on the right track with it, but the last little piece of it shall remain a mystery. Alright, south on we go, guys. 22 is where we just were. Don't want to. I, I know this is the one right next to 22, but I don't want to overlook it because I felt like there was at least one more that kind of split like that. I don't remember it being like right on top of the of, of the of the previous one though. But again, there were a couple. <clears throat> there were a couple that I turned got turned around and kind of found by dumb luck. So I don't want to. I don't think there were any that were like back to back like that though. Not that I remember. We are flying down Blast Pop. We are flying down the Arkansas River, a scenery uh, package that was created by our friend Downwind Sim. Downwindsim.com is where you can find it. Bush, uh, back Bush Mondays, Bush League Mondays, Backcountry Flying Series Event Number Eleven, and this is the uh, inspired by and the uh, YouTube video. We showed a clip of it at the beginning of the stream from uh, what was it called? Gravity Flying, Gravity Flying Channel, Gravity Nights. That's what it was. Gravity Nights Flying Channel, and they, they did a uh, they did a camping trip where they did some sandbar hopping. I'm going to give this curved sandbar another look. So the Gravity Nights Flying Channel did a uh, camping trip down the Arkansas River, where they made a lot of these little stops here. So uh, Melvin Leroy and Downwind Sim were inspired enough by that to turn it into one of our Bush League events, our monthly Monday Night Bush Leagues. And uh, freely available uh, scenery package that includes these 26 designated sandbars. But I think the total number of sandbars is, good gosh, probably up over 100 of them downwind sim. But 26 of them designated by these little sail banners. And uh, word clues found on the back side of each of those banners. And, uh, yep, and the challenge was really, 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 really fun. Aviation added to Central, says Blast Pop. Yep, and it's, a. Uh, the, the funny thing is, 70 plus miles of sandbars, says Melvin Leroy. Yeah, the funny thing is, Blast Pop is, um, I am not a very experienced bush pilot. This is one, this is a new genre to me for over just the last year that Downwind Sim and Melvin Leroy are responsible for introducing me to, and I, I continue to, to blame them. Um, yeah, total number of sandbars, yeah, lots. Lots is the answer. So uh, so it's their fault that I'm into this kind of flying now, but it's funny, it's like, I, I, I started on that sim just flying airliners like almost everybody does. We got a plane park down there, but I don't think we've got a sail banner. So Downwind Sim, oh, no, nope, there is one. There is one. Downwind Sim was uh, devious enough, though, to put some scenery objects on some of the sandbars that did not have... Uh, did not have ban banners. So, you, so you, you, can't, you can't just assume, just because there's a plane, there must also be a banner. That's not always the case, although in this case it is. Let's get... Uh, Flaps one going. On our right base, let's get flaps two. And again, this this brown field here was kind of what I was eyeing as my uh, as my base to final turn. So that, there we are. This 
is a very, very curved sandbar. There is not a really good straight section to land on. So I'm just going to come in kind of as low and slow over the water as I can and plant it right on the corner there. And this will be another one that I shouldn't expect, you guys, that will, will super duper finesse the landing rate. We're going to need to make sure we plant it right on that corner. Now again, I'm definitely trying not to break the airplane in the process, but super duper smooth landing is not the priority tonight. Tokyo drift around the corner, says Kenny. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, we did that on a couple earlier ones, too. This might be one where we kind of do that a little. Let's make sure this one says 23 on it. <laughs> we'll go ahead and set flaps and uh, neutralize the trim just so we don't forget. 30 seconds. Sometimes that's all it takes. Yeah, so this is one that had six letters on it, and I don't know. Yeah, one of them is circled. So, the, yeah, the general idea is they had two to six letters on them. Some of the letters were circled. And they meant something individually, and then they also meant something collectively. So, I don't want to, I don't want to spoil it. I'm kind of spoiling a little bit of it because I'm showing you some of these um, banners. But uh, I did skip 1 through 14, so you, if you want to do this puzzle, you'd have to catch those by yourself. But uh, let's just pray that this says 23. Okay, it does. <laughs> All right, three more, and then we'll uh, we'll head to our Thomas Landing finish line here. Now, Danwin Sim is saying that number 26 was a challenge to find, and I don't really remember, but it's been a few weeks since I did it now. And again, like I said, I definitely got turned around more than once and found a couple of them at dumb luck, so who knows. <laughs> probably going to be like, oh yeah, I remember that now, <laughs> after I see it. But, uh, yeah, I don't remember. I think I was kind of mixture and rich that night too, so that may have something to do with my memory of it. <laughs> mixture and rich and sleep deprived, if I recall, and the Diamond Sim might be able to vouch for that based on the timestamp of the messages I sent him with the puzzle so, uh, solutions. All right, power's up. Lean for peak RPM. Temps and pressure's all good. Yoke in, brakes up. Ooh, need a lot of right rudder. It's getting, it's, it is getting windier here, guys. I was aiming originally to the right of the sail banner, but we'll pass to its left. All right, let's fly. Okay, we're live, and uh, but yeah, pretty late. Yeah, it was one of those. It was one of those nights. One of those nights. I've fortunately seemed to be past that st worst of that patch. Now, I think, okay, so. Laps are in. Let's. Uh, again, this, I, this is another one where the river bends so suddenly that I, I think. 
that I have brakes in. Okay. I think that I may have lost track of which way I was following the river. Okay, this is a nice wide one. I think that is the river behind us, and this is the river ahead of us, I believe. And the last one we landed at was what, 23, guys? Pretty sure Three more sandbars. familiar. Yeah, I, I think I found it down with Sim, but I think it was kind of by dumb luck. But I am going to circle back here. I, I was preoccupied. And I'm not, I, I, I vaguely, I'm going to vaguely remember where it was, but I, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Like I said, it was uh, it was late. I was sleep deprived. I was under the influence of this or that. <laughs> oh, and at this point, I have kind of lost track of where that river is. Okay, so there's the one we were just looking at. That nice wide. The, the, well, it's, it's wide in the middle but narrow on the ends and I don't think we saw any there but we were so closely looking at it that I don't think we checked out the one after it <laughs> under the influence of this or that yeah exactly screaming cheese you know how it goes One thing that it wasn't uh, screaming cheese was sour beer. Or non sour beer, for that matter. <laughs> yeah, I haven't had the chance to go back to a, uh, you know, I mean, we haven't had one of those little happy hours. We've, we've had some virtual happy hours, but those are always a BYO. Uh, no, I don't think I've I don't think I've had a chance to uh, to to go to one of those little happy hour events since then. Scream and cheese. You know, our virtual happy hours are kind of like you know, fire up a Zoom meeting, mix together whatever you got at the house, and sit around and watch each other drink. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it does sound kind of like something I would enjoy. I, I'm not a beer person, and this is what, uh... 11918. So we got a couple folks flying along with us tonight. That one, I think I know who it is, though. So we gotta 
It's a sour first and a beer second. The sour flavor is not subtle. Five by five. I've also, uh, I've also got the um, Group Flights channel in my Discord open as well. Alright, let me take this turn wider, because this is what I've, I've done twice now. And I don't think I've taken this turn wide enough to really look at this sandbar on the inside of this corner here. Banner down there? No, okay. Oh, or where is there? Oh, there it is. Yep, there sure is. Glad I made the extra circle there, guys. Almost missed one. set that up too well, did I? See if we can make it work. And we might be salvageable. Uh, I think under 300 has been kind of our threshold for the night. <laughs> it's right up there with the worst of them, but uh, like I said, not hard enough to break the plane. So wait a minute, what does that number say? Did I miss? Uh-oh. Alright, well that says 25. That means I have missed... Two of them? No. It means I missed one. I missed, missed number 24. Alright, so we have to go back for 24 and then 26 will be ahead somewhere. Melvin, if that was one of the ones you were trying to find, there it is. I'm, I'm glad that I trusted my gut, though. My gut was like, ah, you still haven't really gotten a good look at that sandbar. You might want to circle around one more time. So I'm glad that I took that extra time. Alright, but we are going to, uh, we're going to take off from this one and we're going to kind of follow it back north. We're going to backtrack and pick up number 23. Or no, 24 rather. 20 are there crutches? No, it's a fishing pole. My landings aren't that bad, screaming cheese, jeez. Kitty monster might beg to differ. Uh, 
it. So apparently there's one that I missed. field <laughs> and the diamonds and binoculars yeah the diamonds and binoculars are, are are down here as well um so scream and cheese all right guys <laughs> scream and cheese asks and diamonds and listen carefully sir Screaming Cheese asks, didn't someone, let me, let me, let me say that again, didn't someone make a scenery with the wreckage of a sim streamer? Who made that and who was the downed pilot? <laughs> Screaming Cheese, you are remembering correctly, let's just put it that way. I think you've answered your own question, sir. <laughs> yeah, that was our Utah Canyonlands challenge, and that was indeed uh, that was indeed the dastardly Mr. Downwind Sim. Okay, so that's the one we that was twenty one. That was twenty one. All right, so we've gone way back now. <laughs> who me? That one's him. Huh? Who? What? What are we talking about? <laughs> and it is still a hundred degrees in this room. There's 24, so obviously I'm missing something here. Oh, wait a minute, no, 24 was the one we needed to go back for. All right, so that's, that's cool. Twenty-four was the one we needed to go back for. So we'll start a little loop here. <laughs> No, uh, Screaming Cheese, that was our Canyonlands challenge in Utah, which I think was uh, number six. And then we wound up coming back to that to rub salt in the wound. We wound up coming back to that a second time, uh, which I believe was number ten. Don't hold me to those numbers. I'm, I'm, I'm a little foggy on them uh, by now. But that was the, actually, that was the first one. Oh, no, the Red Bull can is here. The Red Bull can's here in the glove box. All right, again, I'm setting this up extremely poorly. All right, you know what? Let's do a... Uh, let's do a left 360 for altitude. Um... Yeah, so that, the Utah Canyonlands challenge was the first one of these that we did that had a word puzzle associated. So that was the one that kind of established that pattern. Oh, there's Melvin. So, 
basically extend the downwind here. Can't see him through the flaps now. The flaps are fully extended. It's impeding my vision over my right shoulder, left shoulder. Uh, is the AOA indicator easy to explain or demonstrate? Um, no, nah, it's not too bad. So basically, the ideal angle of attack is where that little green dot is in the center. Um, as you start to get into your uh, increased angle of attack is where you start to see that first line there. Um, slower you go, um, the steeper the angle of attack, the more, the more lines you see. Um, <clears throat> once you get beyond that uh, green dot, you're starting to get close to uh, stall, but you can go a line or two above it and still be flying. Oh my goodness, we got the DC-3 here too now. Yeah, that one worked out alright. Uh, so this is now... Let's see. That's now 24, okay. Did we ever see 23, guys? I'm not even convinced we saw. So there's... there's 216 Charlie. So I think that's uh, changed. That's This is now plane number three for 216 Charlie. <laughs> uh, so there's 24. We saw 25 already. Now it's just the, uh, the evil number 26 that we've got to find. And then we can kind of head for the hills, call it a night over at uh, Thomas Landing. Thomas Landing was the one that I f was uh, looking for something that looked suspiciously airstrippy, if y'all had seen that clip as well. Alright. Got the follow from Tantalus, 792. Tantalus, thank you so much for being here. We're doing some bush style flying, which is not always what we do on this channel, but we do it about once a month and sometimes a little more often than that. We're in the uh, Alaska River, Alaska, the Arkansas River, south of Wichita, Kansas, head toward uh, Thomas Landing, Oklahoma. And uh, we got one more designated sandbar. This is a challenge that was put together by our friend Downwind Sim. The details are available at downwindsim.com. That water flying? What's he doing? Yes. Well, thanks for keeping me company tonight on the drive home. Oh, there you go. Happy to do it. I uh, I could only chat when I was parked at a traffic light. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I got you. I know some of those responses came in kind of late. I'm like, oh, he's, he's got to wait until he's got a safe moment to do that. I'm home, so I'm going to sit here and uh, watch you suffer through it. Well, I think, I mean, I, I don't specifically remember seeing a 23, so I can't remember now if I've accidentally skipped 23, but um, other than that, I know I've seen, tw I'm at 24 now, we saw 25 out of sequence, so it should now be just the, the 26 one, and then uh, call it a night. Uh, sounds great. All right. So flaps are set, trim is uh, neutralized, brakes are in, power's up, temps and pressures look good. Lean for max RPM, yoke forward, brakes off. Aiming just to the right of the sail banner. Tail well, I still have two to find here, so I'm gonna I'm heading downstream. And away we go. Mr. 
Mr. Leroy, welcome back to the Friendly Skies. Assuming that's the Delta 430 that we're talking to. Alright, where are we at? Now i got to regain my bearings. We're going a little bit out of sequence. I know that 25 was the one that was kind of around that bend. in now. 25 was right around that bend near the bridge and then so 26 apparently is down here in this uh, this, this kind of this delta. Got yeah, Melvin Leroy. You're in the right area for 25. the 25 banner right there, guys. I did, I did, I did to a banner 25. Alright, so... 26. Somewhere along here, somewhere, somewhere, there'll be a sail banner somewhere. <laughs> Step to the face, rejoined at right the right time. We're doing Broadway hits here, dude. Yes, here we go. There's 26. Yeah, there we are, down with Sim. I, I was going to say, I didn't remember it being too terribly difficult to find. <laughs> yeah, this is the one you guys need to trigger when you when you hear when you catch me doing that. Hold on. I love to sing about the moon and the June and the spring. I love to sing about a sky of blue or a tea for two or anything. <laughs> else. Yeah, Twitch will demonetize those few seconds. Yeah, no, I know. I know. Actually, and and uh, Kenny Monster, it's actually uh, YouTube that's been <coughs> flagging those as copyright claims. But I don't run ads on the YouTube archive flights anyway, so I don't worry about it. <laughs> Beautiful, says Stat to the face. Under the white arc, we'll go flaps one. Wiggles, what are you doing down there? <laughs> For co pilot number two, is her name is Ella, but we hardly ever call her that. We most often call her Wiggles. <laughs> she earns it. All right, I've, I've kind of lost sight of uh, exactly where I'm intending to set this thing down, so. Let's turn to what we think is our final. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> uh, 
that, so I'm, I'm a little slow, a little early, but uh, hopefully that means this is one that we'll be able to give some nice finesse to and make a nice smooth landing and keep Kenny Monster off our back about his back. <laughs> We'll see, but believe me, there's always a chance I can screw it up somehow. Uh, crabbing well to the left at this point. I wonder if the wind has, has picked up that drastically. So we need to lower the right wing. Some more left rudder in there. Yeah, no, hopefully not. <laughs> yeah, that was about how I wanted to do that one. I mean, we floated over a good chunk of sand, but I mean, that was kind of by design, because the banner's all the way up here. Downwind Sims talking to Kenny Monster about the addictive habit of scenery creation, which Kenny Monster is. That is a rabbit hole that Kenny Monster has fallen deep, deep into and hit a lot of the buried roots on the way down. Downwind Sim says scenery development is worse than the cult. The cult being flight sim economy. There we are, Downwind Sim 26. Like I said, I don't, I didn't remember it being too terribly difficult to find. I, at least, I don't know. Didn't have any issues with it. Alright, we want to take off again to the uh, north. So that's all of them. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and, uh, and figure out where we are from our final destination here. Again, the, the destination that I've got programmed into, the, uh, into the, the bar up top is not exactly correct. Our destination is about five miles east of... Uh, <coughs> Of, of what I've got programmed in there. So we're, we're programmed, what's programmed in was um, McConnell Air Force Base to Ponca City Regional. All right, so that's where it thinks we're, that's where the progress bar thinks we're going because it did not have this in its database. We are somewhere over, so what we need to do is actually look for these two bridges here. And if we see the second bridge, we can follow that road west in towards Ponca City, and then the airport's to our south. So that will be the plan. So we'll, we'll gain a little bit of altitude. Again, the uh, field elevation at Thomas Landing is 11, say we'll 1,100 round figures. So we'll enter the pattern there at 2,100, but we're going to pick up some altitude first so we can get a aerial view of this Call Lake, Call Lake and Call City, and once we see the bridge, most were stuck tracking close to the river channels as Downwind Sim. Yeah, I, I, um, yeah, I mean, I, I kind of was just investigating every sandbar that I saw, and I didn't remember, when you said that earlier, I was like, I don't, I don't know, I don't remember that being any different than any of the rest of them. Um, but again, like I said, it was late in that, I couldn't remember. Um, so again, we're, we're somewhere, um, let's see, when, when did we come into this thing? It was near a, a bridge too, it might be further north, let's see. Yeah, 
so we so the okay I got you so the one that we came in over the one that we came in over that had this that sandbar that was right there under the bridge probably that one so we might be kind of down in this area to where the the destination is like directly off to our west but I'm gonna take off we're gonna take off to the north we're gonna kind of circle east get a view of the land and then we'll uh circle back and head that way. Yeah, so I managed to crush my nose gear coming in. I, I don't think I'm going to be able to get back out. <laughs> Downwind Sim says my mouth is closed. Yeah, and I remember Downwind Sim that um, I did find it. I think I found it because you guys were already parked there. Uh, but I also remember there were... Um, there were some trees on the runway which made it harder to spot, uh, but I have since installed the updated version that removes the trees from the runways, runway, so I think I will be fine. I, I, that, that one I think I will kind of remember what it looks like because I, I will now have been there twice, uh, once on stream and once off. So I think we'll be okay. In the spirit of no hand says Downwind Sim. Yeah, I think... What I remember is that it's way closer than you think it is, but in order to just kind of get my bearings, I, I wound up kind of circling up away from it and, and coming back. I, 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 I found it. I found it okay the first time when you guys were there, and then I think I, I had an easier time with it the second time, actually, because the, um, the runway was not obscured by trees. So, All right, so we got flaps one. We got uh, trim... Get set to neutral. What is that that guy in Delta 430 flying? Is he, uh... He'd already disconnect, maybe. Yeah, he already disconnect, possibly. Yeah. Oh. No, he's... Okay, there he is. So what is he flying? He's in the 738. Okay, well, of course. It's not exactly the most capable bush aircraft. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It's a shame it's not Poscon where you could hear that flyby happen. <laughs> Alright, do we have planes up ahead? Oh, we got that parked aircraft up ahead. And then we got uh, Melvin. Alright, so I will take off aiming between the parked aircraft and the sail banner. Uh, we got flaps one set. Power up. In around just a touch. Yoke forward, brakes off. Tail is flying. And plenty of room to gain some speed here, so we shall. Take off, and I'm going to aim the nose a little bit to the east, because like I said, it seems like we are being pushed pretty well to the west at this point. Alright, so at this point, I know I'm kind of in the bend of that call lake. I'm going to uh, kind of circle up into the east, and we'll gain some altitude, and we'll... Yeah, man, sorry about the nose gear, the 738's not generally regarded as a capable bush plane. You know, you gotta work with what you got sometimes. <laughs> I figured you should see a cell here, but uh, yeah, now I'm really impressed. <laughs> So let's figure out where we are in relation to this lake. Let's pick up some more altitude. So this is where the okay. So this is where it kind of spreads out and gets wider. Did he freeze? Yeah, he may have. He may have just disconnected. Yep, 
he's gone. Um, okay, so the river goes out to the west, and then it comes back in. So here's what we need to do. <clears throat> At the point where it comes back in, Stab to the Face says, how do these sandbars look in flights in 2020? Are they good enough to land on? I have no idea. That would be a good project for us, I think. So when we get out around this bend, and we're just going to follow that next little hunk into the west, and then we'll, we should more or less be pointed right toward it. And as I recall, it is a north and south runway. So there's, there's the west portion. It goes out to the end, and there is indeed a bridge depicted there. So we'll basically follow that river out to the west, turn to the right and follow that to the east, and then straight off to the east from there. Should, I'm sorry. I'm an idiot. I'm, I'm backwards. We're, we're out to the south and east now. Downwinson says I haven't looked at it. Yeah. We, we need to do that. We need to figure that out. Um, I, I, would love to, uh, I would love to know whether some of these upcoming adventures could be done as a hybrid with some of us flying in X-Plane and some of us flying in uh, Flights of 2020. Now, I know that with the with the things like the word puzzles and such, you know, it, it would double the work of trying to create those scenery objects for both sims, and I'm not suggesting that necessarily. Um, but, uh, but yeah, if both, both sims, you know, X-Plane with a little bit of tweaking and maybe a, a Microsoft Flight Sim natively you know, have some of these strips that are landable. I, in fact, uh, down with some Melvin Leroy uh, offline conversation, um, the proposed itinerary for our next one, I was thinking about flying that in uh, Flights in 2020 over the weekend upcoming just to see what it might look like. Um, and a matter of fact, I might have time to do that tomorrow. Getting close to that uh, overcast ceiling there. We've been flirting with that ceiling all night. This is... Using real-world weather, which if the weather's adverse on a VFR flight, I generally don't. But it looked like it was okay, with the exception of that low ceiling. And I had said, well, we're going to pr pretty much stay below that ceiling all night anyway. So, most of it is there? Okay. <clears throat> Belvin and I looked at some of that for the upcoming flight in November. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, I would love to be able to say that... Uh, you know, folks flying either sim could fly along. Guys, so those of you kind of new to the channel, um, on the first Monday of every month, you know, with with a couple of exceptions schedule-wise, but generally on the first Monday of every month, we do a, uh, a, a an event with this style of flying. And a lot of times it's in mountainous terrain. Uh, we've done some in Idaho. We've done some in uh, British Columbia, Canada. We've done some in... Uh, Utah, we were talking about that one earlier. Uh, we've done the uh, we've done uh, one in the Shenandoah Valley over here in the, uh, on the East Coast. And I say here because I'm I'm local to the East Coast, not because that's where we are now. Um, this one this one with the sandbars was kind of unique. Uh, most of the time we're in you know kind of rugged mountainous terrain. We did one one that wasn't in uh, real mountainous terrain, but it was in kind of really hilly uh, islands. Was up in the San Juan Islands, north and west of Seattle. That was a real fun one. Uh, we've done two in the uh, in the Seattle area now. Now that I mention it, um, I'll turn the labels off because if Melvin's already at the finish line, he's going to tip me off to where it is. But I did say that if you got going down this lobe of the river or the, of, of Call Lake, you can pretty much follow. Yeah, don't worry, I'm lost. <laughs> okay. If you hit Ponca City, you know you've gone too far. Right, right. So my plan was, as I said, this, this bridge over our right shoulder, we could follow that river in and uh, should kind of just put us on a left base to the southbound runway, honestly. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's it's pretty much straight straight ahead from where I am. We're back down at 2200. 2100 is uh, pattern altitude. So if we're over the lake, how far away are we? Five miles, four miles. Thomas Landing traffic, Skyhawk 514 Delta Victor, five miles east, 2100. Inbound for full stop, Thomas. Look at how crystal clear those downwind sim binoculars are. Always, man, don't, don't ever fly without them. A value at twice the price, indeed, yes. For what I paid for them, I would easily have paid double. Simulated Aviation Marty is here. Simulatedaviation.com, guys, if you haven't checked it out. Awesome, awesome website where sim pilots of all different walks can share resources and information. Marty, how you doing, brother? You're catching us at the very end of our revisit of the Bush Flight number 11, which was the uh, day after Labor Day. Definitely a grass strip that we're looking for. Downwind, did you move the food truck? It's on to the next destination. <laughs> Slant Alpha's like wearing out the binoculars, I think. Always. <laughs> Alright, yeah, so if we get to this little red lake here, we're too far. Stab to the face says, all the sandbars seem to be there, but they're covered in water. I haven't found the landing spot yet. Yeah, I know you that in X-Planes... got three planes in here. It's like a, it's like a search and rescue deal. <laughs> um, I know that for, for X-Plane, Downwinson had to do quite a bit of tweaking to make those landable. So, don't know what that um, process entails in, uh, in 2020. In uh, Flight Sim 2020, rather. All right, so this is the lake kind of forks off so it should be to the east I'm gonna fly south however and look out the left window for it oh wait a minute the DC3 was a bit of a giveaway but uh I will say that is it. And we got that brown patch there that we can kind of use as our base turn. Yes, Sim have Marty. I saw that you guys were doing that tonight. I will join one of those at some point for sure. It was great, says uh, Sam F. Marty. So, guys, simulatedaviation.com. Um, you know, we, we tend to be, on this channel, we tend to be kind of that sim-centered, but simulatedaviation.com is a is a uh, amalgam of a bunch of different flight sim communities, all of them very passionate and very uh, enthusiastic. And uh, it's a great website to kind of keep tabs on news and releases and updates. And, uh, but also, like I said, share resources and stories and uh, make friends from other other parts, other pieces of the simulated aviation community. So, yeah, Friday night, we've got our, gener our regular scheduled stream, Marty, but Sunday, you might very well see me. 
Alright, so on the eastern end of this brown patch. Thomas Landing, Skyhawk 5 on Fort Alta Victor is on a left base to final for the northbound runway at Thomas Landing. Nice gentle left turn. And aim for that little cluster of buildings there. So the simulated aviation ones are typically on just uh, Microsoft Flight Sims uh, multiplayer server ar architecture. So much more casual. You don't have to worry about air traffic control. You don't have to worry about whose airspace you're in. You know, much more of a uh, casual sim environment, but a group flight with a lot of participants, and uh, they look like a lot of fun. Yeah, definitely check those out, and... Uh, Tim and Marty, the two uh, proprietors of the simulatedaviation.com website, awesome guys. Very supportive of what we do here as well. Uh, yeah, we got a we got a good wind pushing us right to left here, so we're going to need to. Uh, Cross the controls up a little bit, get that wing down. Keep her nice and stable. Put her down over the trees. Power into the flare just a touch. Seventy-eight with a bounce, with a couple bounces, and probably a little pirouette because that that crosswind is really oof. That crosswind is really vicious. Looks like we will avoid the fence this time, which I don't think I could say last time. Welcome to the end. Nicely done. All right. What we can do, though. Thank you, sir. Thanks for having us. What we can do, though, is we can finally, finally set the lights. Set the lights for uh, taxiing. <coughs> Thomas Traffic, Sky 514 out to Victor. We're clear the runway taxiing back to the brush to the uh, west of the uh, strip. Thomas. Yeah, we had, the last one wound up being a little bit bouncy, Kenny. But at least the first touches were nice and light. <clears throat> first touches were nice and light. And, uh... You know, you're always gonna, you're always gonna bounce a little bit in the bush. That's just kind of the way it's... It's the way it's done. It's not, it's not a proper, uh... Bush landing, we don't bounce a little bit. <laughs> That's right, crack open one for me, man. Oops. Guess I need to do that over here, huh? Said he's a porter, but he's looking like a Kodiak, but uh, it's all good. It's a bush plane one way or the other, right? <laughs> Alright, we're not going to run over any of our friends, are we? Okay. Good. Only the f food truck, and of course, you always want to park right next to the food truck. Alright guys, here we are. 
Parking brakes on. Taxi light off. We can get the uh, avionics off. Do a quick mag, live mag check. Make sure that the mag switch does indeed kill power to the. Uh, yeah, it does. Okay. Now that we know that it works, we can go throttle all the way out. Mix all the way out. Mags can now go cut off for real. Nav and beacon lights. If I can get those. Yeah, there we go. Those are quick spots. And then the power. All right, there we are, guys. And Mr. Melvin Leroy pulling off the park in front of us as well. So let's uh, see if we can scooch the view and get a nice little finishing shot here. There we go. How's that looking? <laughs> Hi, right, very cool. If you have time on Sunday, come out. Yeah, man, I will definitely keep it in mind, man. I uh, uh, let's let's what's the what's the word? Ravens Ravens have first priority, but they're not playing this Sunday, so I think it's a good Sunday for me to do a little bit of bonus line. So we'll keep it in mind, man. One p.m. Eastern time, right? Exactly. When the Ravens are not playing, Qualop says, uh, "Good work," and Kelvin. Triple Z is asking us if we're finished. Yeah, man, we're done for the night. Appreciate y'all being here. Uh, Sim Marty says, uh, heading off to bed, have a great night. If you want to come out to the flight events planned, yeah, simulatedaviation.com, guys. Definitely check that website out. Like I said, lots of great news about uh, recent uh, developments and updates for flights in 2020 and all the major sim platforms. Bunch of folks over there into uh, digital combat sim, DCS and even some virtual flight demo teams, formation flying teams, which are phenomenal. I mean, I watched a virtual air show put on by some affiliates over there at simulatedaviation.com that was as good as any uh, air show that I've ever attended in person or seen on TV. It was so professionally done. Actually, the guy, uh, they told they told me that the guy that they had narrating is actually a real world air show narrator. So, I mean, it showed, it was, it was phenomenal. Very, very, very well done. So go ahead and check them out, simulatedaviation.com. Again, you know, we, we tend to do a lot of general aviation and the airliner flying, and we, we focus on that sim on this channel. Uh, but simulatedaviation.com can open you up to many other worlds within the flight sim community that you might not know uh, exist if, you, uh, if you're just looking at us here. So very cool. Oh, Kelvin's over on the other side of the planet. Well, thanks for checking us out tonight. Melvin Leroy's popped out for the evening. Appreciate you being here. This is mostly a general aviation flying stream. We were on the VATSIM network tonight, although we really never had any air traffic control to work with out here in the uh, vast expanse of uh, Class Echo airspace. But um, a lot of times we do uh, flights on the on the VATSIM network that uh, include events. This Friday will be well, will be one of them. And that is going to be, what is this Friday? Let me get the show schedule in front of me. This Friday is the 23rd. It's Whiskey Friday. So we're going to do some slant whiskey flying, which is radio navigation at high altitude and high speed. We'll be back into the uh, the, the Fly J Sim Boeing 727, which is uh, generally crewed by a person of three. You'll be seeing me covering the roles of three people. Uh, as we fly that 727, recreating a 1974 American Airlines flight that started in Oklahoma City. We'll fly it up to Chicago O'Hare, and then we will fly, hopefully, if uh, DC is landing in South Ops, we will fly the River Visual to Runway 19 at uh, Washington Reagan National Airport in the Fly JSM 727. So Oklahoma City, O'Hare, and then DC on Friday the 23rd, Whiskey Friday as we fly with the equipment code slant whiskey meaning radio navigation high altitude so uh, check that out then on wednesday this uh between now and then uh we very well might be on and uh, doing some virtual air traffic control on that sim which we very often do at washington reagan i uh, i am a a delivery ground and tower rated controller in the washington artcc on that sim so that gives me the uh, right to control at any facility within uh Washington ARTCC's airspace. Most often that means Dulles or Washington Reagan or Baltimore Washington International, but occasionally also means Raleigh or Norfolk. Atlantic City was uh, featured once. Uh, we control at Wilmington, although I've, not, I've never actually controlled there, but it's part of our facility. Uh, what else? Did I mention Norfolk Richmond, I think, is the other one that I didn't say. Um, but um, those facilities, plus a handful of uh, less, uh, you know, a little bit more minor ones, are all within the Washington ARTCC airspace, and uh, 
So you'll occasionally see them featured. So Wednesday nights tends to be the air traffic control night. Not always. It's a little bit hit or miss. Uh, but I think this Wednesday there's a very good chance that we'll be on and controlling somewhere at the uh, Washington ARTC. So we got that, uh, that coming up on Friday. A week from tonight, we are <clears throat> back into Flight Sim 2020, Flight Simulator, Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. Uh, we have not done any flying out in Hawaii yet, so I think we're going to take that Community Mod Cessna 152X, uh, and we're going to take that out and do some Hawaiian Island hopping uh, on Monday the 26th, the week from tonight. So those of you into uh, Flight Sim 2020, if you want to join us along, we will be on the VATSIM network, uh, but we will be uh, out there in Hawaii where we will mostly be outside of control of airspace, so go ahead and get your VATSIM account set up if it's not already, and, and join us on VATSIM even uh, though we will be outside of uh, most controlled airspace for that flight, so you don't want to worry about what to say to controllers. If you've ever wanted to get started on VATSIM, though, by the way, there are some tutorials on my YouTube channel. Links over there on the uh, lower left side of your screen. Uh, hit that YouTube channel up. There's a playlist called Tutorials and some great place, uh, great uh, resources for getting started on VATSIM if you uh, were considering it but not sure how to put, to, put a, a realistic route together or to know what to say to an air traffic controller if you should happen to come across one. Uh, that is a uh, collection of resources that you can use. All right, well, I think that's going to be it, guys. You know, you've got the social media streams at the bottom as well, the uh, Twitter and the Facebook pages, Slant Alpha on both of those. you got the Discord server on the lower right-hand corner. You can uh, stop in and ask questions about anything that you saw or um, just shoot the breeze and say hi if you'd like. Um, all, uh, you see all kinds of information about the channel and what's coming up. The full schedule, full schedule is posted uh, in the About tab um, below the picture window here, but also on that Discord and also on our Facebook page. So uh, plenty of places you can go to see what we're going to be up to. And again, uh, you know, we also let you know on the social media if the plan's going to change. So stay tuned, and we'll keep you posted if things are going to get switched around. All right, that's going to do it. Thanks again, Downwind Sim, for a wonderful scenery package. And... Uh, uh, a great place to come back to and fly over and over again. Uh, a lot of fun, a lot of little places to explore up and down the Arkansas River. So, uh, good place. And again, downwindsim.com, guys. Um, the Monday Night Bush League flights are the first Monday of every month, more or less, uh, with few variations. But coming up on the first Monday in October, October 2nd, is our first anniversary event for that series. And we've got some special stuff uh, included with that so uh, so sit tight and stay tuned and make sure that you are here uh, for for that okay very cool I think we are going to uh, go ahead and call it night then thanks again for those of you who stopped back and uh, visited us those of you who are new to the channel tonight we appreciate you uh, being here we are ever so close to that uh, follower number 1000 and we've got some huge giveaways a huge amount of giveaways planned for when we hit that so Thank you for those who hit the follow button tonight and got us uh, ever so closer to that. So we hope that you will stop back and see us again sometime. All right. Have a good one, guys. Uh, in the meantime, between now and uh, Friday, if we are uh, in uh, Oklahoma City or in uh, between now and Wednesday, if we do happen to get on and do some air traffic control, uh, regardless of when we see you next, please stay healthy in the meantime. Be safe in your own travels and your own adventures, and we'll see you soon. Hold the phone, hold the phone, hold the phone, hold the phone. I am still here. One thing that I've been trying to get in the habit of doing. Who are we rating tonight? Let's find out. Who can we send? Yeah, exactly. There you go. Who's all that we can send uh, some 11 viewers to? Oh, Miss uh, Starflies is up. Uh, 
she's got uh, she's got some flying left to do. Yeah, let's go ahead and hit Star Flies up with a little ray, guys. Uh, if you if you like my channel, you probably like her. She's again, she is actually a real world pilot, so she's uh, does this stuff a little bit more professionally than I do. Um, but also, it's uh, a lot of. Oh, she hasn't taken off yet because she's just getting started. Perfect timing. Let's go ahead and send it over to her. So, guys, um, again, safe travels and your own adventures in the meantime. But uh, in the meantime, stay tuned if you want to see some more uh, general aviation flying here, and uh, probably done a, a lot more proficiently than than, than mine. So, uh, sit tight, guys. We'll see you soon.